unfolding the eternal excellences, the hidden insights of the truth and the depth of the riches of wisdom and knowledge. The Bible says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have not pointed to your weaknesses. He says, I have cleansed thee by the word. I have pointed to your strength. And this is your strength, that I am Christ in you, the hope of glory. The glory of freedom, the glimpses into eternity. The gospel is not supposed to be an assumption. It's not supposed to be just a mere presupposition. Truth is older than language, but the word of God is way deeper than any human language. And now, Apostle Grace with the word. Today, I'm beginning with a question that I have had severally asked. Some of us have asked this question individually. Some of us have had certain people ask this question. It's a big question. And the question is, why is it that in some places, I'm going to emphasize the word some places because it's not happening everywhere in the world. Why is it that in most places we do not see the power, the anointing, the glory of God demonstrated like it used to be back in the day in history? If you are acquainted to modern history, the 1900s, all through the 70s, you'd have that question. If you are just acquainted with church history as we know it from the New Testament, you'll also ask yourself that question because you'll have reference of the early church. You know, the lame were walking so easily, the blind were seeing so easily, the deaf were hearing so easily, the dead were raised so easily. You know, miracle signs and wonders were among them. The Bible says that they all sold all their riches and brought these things together and they shared amidst them and none lacked among them. You see, the church of Jesus Christ growing in a glory and power like I'd never seen before. Of course, even in the Old Testament, if you're to go to the Old Testament, you're going to see and read things that will amaze you. How men made axes float, you know, how men stopped the mouths of lions. You know, you have a man as strong as Samson. He can carry a whole city gate up, go up the hill. You have stories of people who stopped the sun. You have great, great stories, a crowd of men who have witnessed God and experienced the power of God firsthand. And so today, many times people ask the question, why is it that we don't see that power? So whether you're talking about modern history or the ancient thing, why don't we see the anointing like we used to see or read about in the Bible? Why don't we see the power? Some people uh, talk about the healing movements. In the United States that probably happened about the 1930s and 1940s where the lame walking and the blind seeing was a very easy thing. It was so usual, so, so usual, like a worship leader leading a song that is common in church. You see? And uh, today our people are dying in the church of cancers. Our people are dying in the church of viruses. Our people are dying in the church crippled, deaf, dumb. Our people are not healed today. And so as one who has seen the power of God, and I don't say this out of pride for I know the sufficiency is not of me. There's one who has seen the blind see, the deaf hear, the dumb speak, dead raise. I've seen cancers heal. I've seen, I've seen things in this life. And some of you have been in this ministry for quite some time. You can attest to that. One, I feel that the church of Jesus Christ is going to enter another level of the miraculous very, very soon. And so we're preparing our hearts and understanding for that. But um, we still have a vast number of Christians who are not walking and living in the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit as they ought to. Of course, many aspects uh, would answer this question. Today, I want to just, you know, give a brief, a thought or two concerning this thing and open our eyes to one of the major reasons why we no longer see the power of God in our dispensation than ever before. So let's go for this journey. In 1 Corinthians, the 6th chapter, the 12th verse, Paul says a very, very powerful statement. He says, all things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful, he says, unto me. That is in the expression of the liberties of the spirit. I have, you know, grace to access all things. But not all things, he said, are expedient of uttermost importance for me. And he says, and all things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. You see, the first statement, all things are lawful and to me, 
but all things are not expedient to me. The second statement, all things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. So lawful and to me, lawful for me. But he says, but I will not be brought under the power of any. And I want you to underline that. I will not be brought under the power of any. It means that the things you seek to possess could actually possess you. You see that? The things that you look to for your liberties could actually enslave you. The things that appear to serve you, you could actually in the end serve without knowing her. He says the same thing. He repeats it again in 1 Corinthians the 10th chapter, the 21st verse. And he says, you cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of the devils. You cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the table of devils. Do we provoke the Lord to jealousy? Are we stronger than he? And he says again, 23, all things are lawful for me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but all things do not edify or edify not. Here he introduces another thing beyond expedience, beyond the power of a thing over you. He has brought the word edification, that there's certain things that you have access for by the liberties of the spirit, but they're not edifying for you. They're not for your edification. They're not for your edification. And so he's bringing a conversation here that I want you and I to really indulge in and go into because the Lord showed me something so powerful a bug, a disease, something that is eating up our generation faster than ever before. In Judges, the second chapter, from about the 11th verse, a story is given concerning the children of Israel. And the Bible says, And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord, and they served Baal. And they forsook the Lord God of their fathers, which brought them out of the land of Egypt, and followed other gods, small of the gods of the people that were round about them, and bowed themselves unto them and provoked the Lord to anger. They forsook the Lord and served Baal and Ashtaroth. And the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel, and he delivered them into the hands of the spoilers that spoiled them. He delivered them in the hands of spoilers that spoiled them. He sold them into the hands of their enemies round about them so that they could no longer stand before their enemies. Whithersoever they went out, the hand of the Lord was against them for evil, as the Lord had said and as the Lord had sworn unto them, and they were greatly distressed. Nevertheless, the Bible says, the Lord raised up judges which delivered them out of the hand of those that spoiled them. And I want us to have a conversation right there. God is giving us a typical experience, present day 2021, of something that has happened before with the children of Israel. How? That God had committed to have a covenant with them, but they later sold their hearts unto uh, evil and they started worshiping Baalim. They forsook the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and followed after the gods of men and the gods of people. Now, if you read Baal, or Baalim, the plural sense of the God singular Baal, the word actually Baal means Lord or Master. See that? Baal is not just one particular God. He's talking about just a God or a Master or a Lord. So if you say Baal, you mean Master. You mean Lord. You see that? Now I want you to follow me because you shouldn't lose this. So the children of Israel gave unto evil, and when they did, they forsook the God of their fathers and followed other gods that were round about them and bowed themselves unto them and provoked the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to anger. They served Baal. They served a certain master and Ashtaroth. And because of that, as the Lord was kindled in anger, the Bible says he lets them into the hands of them which could spoil to spoil them. You know, those who could spoil to spoil them. What is the meaning of being spoiled? Now, if you go study the word spoiled there, you're talking about the word plundered. So the Lord gave them over to be plundered by the enemy. If you're talking about spoiling, you're talking about being robbed of. So the Lord gave them over to be robbed of certain things, to be disconnected from certain things 
to be afflicted in a certain way. And this is what happens. You see? That is why the Bible says in Jeremiah, the fourth chapter, the 30th verse, he says, when thou art spoiled, what will you do? When thou art spoiled, what will you do? And he gives the typical example of a man which is spoiled. He says, if a man is spoiled, though you clothe yourself with crimson, though you deck yourself with ornaments of gold, though you rent thy face with paintings, in vain you shall make yourself fair, for your lovers will despise you and they will seek your life. What is he trying to say? When a man is plundered by the devil, when a man is robbed of a certain glory, when a man is corrupted from a certain grace, it does not matter how much that man beautifies themselves. It does not matter how much that man or woman dresses themselves up. It does not matter how much cosmetic they'll put on themselves or edit their life. It does not matter how much ornament they will carry upon their life and the impression that they will give to people. It does not matter how much form of godliness is depicted before men. He says, your lovers will despise you and they will seek for your life. They will seek for your life. In other words, they will walk in the way of despise and death. Why? Because they are plundered. They are robbed of a certain glory. They are robbed of a certain power. They are robbed of a certain anointing, a certain realm and function. They are robbed of something. Something is taken off them. You see? And unfortunately today in the church, when certain people get into the place of being spoiled, when they start to see spoilings around them, what they do, they create atmospheres avenues of beautifying themselves to hide what is getting spoiled because today we so much look on the outward of what is given than the inward testimony and that is why there's a preacher who thinks that if you don't have the right lights you cannot have a successful ministry because the glory of that man's ministry is in the color of the lighting one time i met a man and said you know what if you don't have equipment you cannot have a successful ministry Jesus did not have equipment Jesus did not have speakers Jesus did not have cameras Jesus did not have a television station Jesus was not on a radio station but he made an influence he demonstrated and displayed a life and a power more than 2,000 years ago since it happened for three years of that man's ministry up to today he's on the lips of billions and billions of people that are alive and some who have already gone and are up in glory with him did jesus need all of that no he asked his disciples when i sent you without a sandal without a pass without money he asked them did you lack anything and they said no we lacked nothing why because when a man knows what true glory is nothing outside that place in God can define the anointing of God on your life or the power and influence that you have before God that's a generation that is spoiled when you're talking about a generation that is spoiled you're talking about a generation that is giving excuse for not being able to demonstrate the power of God yet the Bible says that all the things that have been hidden even the Godhead have now been revealed to us of the invisible things and he says that now men are without excuse so you don't have any excuse because everything the bible says that is known of him has been revealed or manifested in them who the believer so everything that should be known of god is in you everything that should be known of the creator of heaven and earth everything that should be known of the god of abraham isaac and jacob the bible says is in you why for god has also showed it to you he gave you the revelation of it and that revelation came with the redemptive power and the grace of impartation in your spirit so you have all that pertains to life and godliness the bible says it pleased the father that in him jesus christ should dwell all the fullness of god bodily and that jesus christ is in you and this is the hope of glory christ in you that was the mystery that was hid from the ages past and now revealed and god says now we are without excuse we're not even supposed to be preaching a message of excuse because when you preach a message of excuse 
We don't take the responsibility as a church. We become victims in this narrative. So you have people who think, oh, you know, if I get this, I can go here. If I get that, I can go here. If I just have this much of property, I'll go here. If I can just have this much of partners, then my ministry will go up. Then you got that all wrong. Because it does not begin with the partners that come to you. It begins with the God that you encounter. The true flow of this principle begins when you find favor before God. When you find favor before God, you find favor before men. And because some men do not find or have favor before God, they have built cosmetic ministry and had manipulative ways of getting these partners, these provisions. And that is why you switch on television and a fellow is speaking in the name of the Holy Spirit and is saying that the Holy Spirit has told him in a meeting that 200 people each with a thousand dollars, the Holy Ghost doesn't speak that way. He doesn't speak that way. Why? Because you see, the Bible says if a man should give, let's follow scripture. The man should give as his heart is made up. That means for anywhere for a man to open their heart to give to anybody or anything or a ministry, the heart must be made up or else you're going to force them to give out of necessity or you're going to force them to give grudgingly or you're going to cause them to give in deception without purpose. You understand? So we make even God speak. God said that there are people right now watching me. There are 400 of you. Jesus never did that stuff. Paul never did that stuff. Peter never did that stuff. God sent them out to preach the gospel and he never told them you go fundraising. In fact, somewhere in the message version, he speaks of how we're not even supposed to be fundraising. Why? Because you are the equipment. In Matthew 10, the ninth verse, okay, if you read the message version, he says, don't think you have to put on a fundraising campaign before you start. Don't think about that. He says, you don't need a lot of equipment. You are the equipment and all of you need to keep that going as long as you have three meals a day and you can travel. That's enough for you. If you have food in your mouth and clothes on you, if you are anointed, you'll never seek anything more. If you're really anointed by God. So I'm not saying that in the church there are no needs. No. But when a priest in a church who really is called of God, announces a need they have to respond if he teaches Christ right you don't need to twist the hands of men and make God say things he has not spoken about no that's beautifying yourself but still you will be despised and you are for the death why because that's just not the way of the spirit that's one way of money but there are many other aspects how many people have met the anointing of God exclusive that if you don't go to this man of God you cannot have a breakthrough if you don't talk to this prophet you cannot have a breakthrough if you don't seek this apostle you cannot have a breakthrough we have given the world an impression that the price is only on the men of God and the rest of them do not have access yet God shed his blood for these individuals and the same spirit resident in you man of God is the same spirit resident in them but you prefer to keep them enslaved and make them as though babes only addicted and connected to you that without you they cannot leave says so that you can continue having your ways of manipulating them because you don't know how to keep people and so the only way to do that a man will have to manipulate his way some of them have actually kept their own church members in bondage because they know that if they are free they'll leave and so they preach messages that will keep them in bondage Every day they are casting out devils of men which never leave. So they are falling down, they are rolling on the floor, they are screaming. But you look at them 10 years, 20 years and nothing is changing on them. Why? Because he prefers to have them that way. He thinks or he could think in his head or the thing at work in him knows that if they are free, he fears that they will leave. No. The mystery of this kingdom is simple. To set men free through the truth. When men know the truth, they shall be free. We're supposed to have them wise unto that which is good and simple concerning evil. But now what you find in the church of Jesus Christ, they're teaching people every demon. The demon that affects your uncle, the demon that has refused you to get married, the demon that has refused you to see, the demon that has refused you to hear, the demon that has refused you to pray, the demon that has refused you to eat, the demon that has refused you to work, even though this woman has a very bad attitude and they think it's a generational castle for generations that is standing in her life to be a hard worker, yet she just has a very silly attitude that she learned from her mother's breast. And all she needs is common sense. That is why Christians are broke. That is why it's hard to hire born-again Christians sometimes. 
Because that's the fellow who says, you know, hire me the whole week, except, you know, I have to be here. I have to do this overnight. I have to do all of that. And then you look at them praying for 20 years and they have no results of prayer. And I'm not saying I'm against prayer. I'm only saying something is wrong with the believers. And anybody who has a full slice of understanding can discern that something is wrong. Why? Because that's the Jesus we've given people. It's almost as though that poverty is associated with Christians. And sometimes, I'm sorry to say, sometimes even in some circles you find that they display a stupidity that even the world does not have. The world does not have. We find ourselves doing business with Muslims and non-believers. Because if you do it with a Christian, they don't even have the basic wisdom that a man is born with. Yet they have the Holy Spirit and they speak in tongues the whole night. Something is wrong, you see? So anyway, we see a generation that is spoiled, that is plundered, that is robbed of a certain glory, robbed of a certain peace, robbed of a certain understanding, robbed of a certain experience. They are robbed, they are plundered, and they don't even know. Things are leaving them, and they cannot even tell why or how these things are leaving them. And when I read church history, for example, there was a time in America, the United States of America, because that's, you know, quite a number of movements have happened there. I'll use that as an example because it's one of the oldest, uh, most notable nation, you know, to hold this thing, this anointing. There was a time in America, you'd not have a successful ministry if you had service and nothing happened. Today, in 2021, a man can fill a 50,000 seater stadium and nothing happened. No blind eye, no deaf ear, no cancer or tumor living, nothing, not even a flu healed. Because many have even disconnected from the purpose and responsibility of the truth. Now we minister to them as babes which are emotional. If you can only appeal to their hearts to teach them out of depression and stress and these things that are disturbing their brains. And for them it's just enough. If you can just leave them where they are as long as they can have food and can have clothes and drive cars and live in very nice houses that's enough for them and no offense i'm not against that nation but that is why now the politics of the united states is the way it is the christian lost the born again believer lost but i'm not worried about that because there's some prophetic about it god is trying to work them up and he will I know they will wake up because they need some persecution. They need to be shaken a bit and then things will get in line. I'm not worried about the United States, but I'm trying to give an example because it's like the bigger brother of everybody. You see what I'm saying? Almost all our fathers in this nation were taught by Bible schools from there or somehow went there. Or some Bible schools came here. So we cannot take away what God has done through that great nation. But something has happened. Now, go across the world, go in different nations. These things are there on different stages and degrees. There's a spoiling in the church that we don't have words for. And it continues to happen every day. Again, I said today, you'd have service in certain nations and nothing needs to happen. Where are those days? Where is the God? I read about the stories of Catherine Kuhlman. And people would heal as they are coming to the tent. You know, somebody's sick and as they are coming to the tent, they're getting healed. They're getting healed. John G. Lake. You read about fellows and you're like, what a God. What an anointing. Even in Uganda, we have stories of men who saw God in ways, miracles, signs and wonders that you have no words for. Oh, someone says, why isn't it happening in our times? Simple. Something has spoiled us. Why? Because we forsook God and now we have followed Baalim other masters the things that were our slaves and servants have enslaved us and now we are their slave and servant that's just how it is we followed after many other gods some of the gods that we followed are baalims is to success for example do you know that a man can be so desperate for success that in the process he can lose god do you know that a man can be so desperate for power in the world that he would lose god do you know how many Christians are just $10,000 away from disconnecting from fellowship. They're in church because they're just poor. They're just $5,000 away. If they can just get a salary of $5,000 a month, they'll not fellowship anymore. They'll not tune in to watch the service. They'll not, no, because they're just that petty. They're so spoiled that they no longer can understand 
the glorious riches of the inheritance of the saints which we have in Christ Jesus. Some of you are praying because your husband slept you last night. Some of you are in service because your child is on drugs. That's why you are. If your child was not on drugs, you would not be in the presence of God. If you had not failed to find a job two, three years ago, you would not be here. But you're here because you have problems. And I'm telling you, sir, madam, brother or sister, you still have it wrong. Because we don't seek God only that our problems will be solved. We seek God because in him was life. And that is why them which came to Jesus, they come to Jesus, where have you been? They're telling him we missed you. He says, uh-uh, you're not following me for anything. You come to me because you want bread. That's what you want. This was 5,000. And in his later times of ministry, they all left. They all left. They leave, they which come to seek bread. Because when they're full, what do they need? You see? It's just the way of men. And then he comes to the 12 and asks them, are you going to leave also? Will you go away also? And they answered him and said, for where can we go? Whom shall we go for? Thou hast the words of eternal life. You have the words of eternal life. You know, that's why the 12 stay is because they could pick the waves of life. The 5,000 pick the waves of food, provision, job, car, husband, business, career, you know, uh, going to America, whatever it is. That's the 5,000. The 12 are saying, how can we go away from this? For with thee are the words of eternal life. Those are the men that become the pillars of the extension of the gospel, even when the Christ is gone, because they understood the responsibility of this calling and the life that was available for them. And so we seem to seek a relationship with the word of whose life we carry not. How can we have the results of that word when we don't carry the life of that word? You see what I'm saying? Why? Because we gave ourselves over to idols. In John, he says, little children, keep yourselves from idols. He says, keep yourselves from idols. Keep yourselves from idols. In Hosea, the second chapter, the 16th verse, he prophesies of a time that is going to come where all of this will pass. But how is that going to pass? How is that going to change? How are we going to disconnect from the gods that are around us? Recently, I was reading a small document and Google pronounced recently that in the past two years, now listen to this because it shocked me, more information has been created than all human history combined. The past two years, more information has been created on the internet than the rest of human history. Now we are in the age of what we call the age of information overload. What is the age of information overload? There's just so much information that is available to us, so much data that is available to us that it has broken the order of how man was created to think. You see that? Back in the day, people used to use mobile phones to call for purpose. Where are you? I'm here. Let's meet at two. That was it. Just give me an example. They used to use mobile phones for that purpose. Let me call brother so-and-so, sister so-and-so, and meet here, and then we get down over that. And phones were as minimalist as they were. They only serve the basic function to keep basic things moving. Today, you look at a young man with a phone. Recently, I met a, somebody, that, I don't know if he's your therapist or something, and he was telling me that they're even treating people recently whose backs have bent because they bow to these phones. Now it's a treatment, you see? Internet has now been recognized that it's an addiction, generally. Even World Health Organization said that internet is an addiction. Now some people can be addicted to internet. I went to China and I found boys who could game for two days. A boy sits before a video game with a bosta or something like that, something that would keep him away. And then he plays a video game the whole day. He just sleeps a little bit, like 10 minutes, 15, and he's back. For two days, he's not left a chair. 
except to ease himself. Just imagine how somebody can sit before a video game for two days. Two days. It was meant to sub this young man for a pleasure of two, three hours. Now it has taken over 48 hours of this young man's life. And there is nothing he can do about it. I saw a video sometime where a lady was trying to take a video game of their son and the son threw a tantrum because they're telling you the effect of a video game on a little child now is like somebody who takes drugs. The dopamine levels are stirred to places you don't even have definition for. And so this kid is running mad because they're taking away his game because he can't live without it. You know? And now our social media has come. You are on Facebook. You are on Twitter. You are on Snapchat. You are on Instagram. You downloaded TikTok. There are many things. Some of them I didn't even know their names. Sometimes I wonder, how do you keep up? How does somebody just keep up with every information coming? And you have all these news on YouTube that are coming left, right, and center, whether they are fake or junk. And I tell people, if you watch your body and say, you know what, I will not eat everything. This is just your body. You see? You say, you know what, I'm not going to eat junk food. Or today I overate so much red meat or I ate so much carbohydrates I need to do this and do that if you can take time to watch your body even exercise it what are you doing for the mind that is receiving junk how do you detox it you see because some people's minds now are the place again they call it the age of information overload there's just too much information and this is what the information overload does I think it was uh, first discussed by a fellow called Alvin Toffler in the 1970s this guy discovered this and he said a time is coming as we're going where so much information is going to be available that men will get to a point where they no longer think for themselves. And that's the generation we're in right now. Men cannot think for themselves. They cannot effectively process information. They cannot effectively utilize information because they no longer have the space to process and utilize. They no longer have the space to meditate and think for themselves. Why? Because they're feeding and feeding and feeding and the effects of that overload are that now people have gone to a point where you have so much information but your brain cannot retain it. You read so much, you can read an article, but after two hours you can't even remember it. They can read a number of a document and in just two minutes it's out of their head. They can't cram it. Their brain cannot hold information anymore because it's not trained to process. It's not trained to utilize. It's not trained to allow the right processes of a man who meditates to take place. They can't contemplate anymore. They're feeding their brains every other day. And some people get to places where they feel like they're almost running mad. Some of you sit before mobile phones and computers and you feel that your brain is full. It's full of something you have no idea about, but your brain is full. It's not full of God. It's not full of knowledge. It's not full of truth. It's full of something. You're watching a video. You're reading something, a text. You understand? Somebody once made a statement. He said, for example, when you look at emails, and he says, emails are simply an organized system of people imposing their agenda on your life. You understand what I'm saying? And that's the truth. Because information was available, and these fellows thought, how do we get this information into a more organized systematic way such that their confusion is organized facebook is that organized system how do you spend two hours eh, arguing over opinions no but he's black he's blue no dude it's black no duh it's blue you understand and this is two hours they're arguing it's blue it's pink it's blue. You just wake up in the morning and you are on other people's agenda. Huh? Like one time I was telling somebody, I don't understand how somebody can just wake up and go on Facebook and take a selfie eating chicken and chips. Then they raise their lips a bit. You understand? And then they get 20,000 likes. 20,000. Listen, that's why I can't be on Facebook. I'm not against those of you who are on Facebook. But it's just so much for a man who hears God. Doing what on Instagram? Taking whose photo? Why? Do you understand? How can you spend all your beautiful life watching videos and videos and videos? You've stored them on your phones, they're on your computers, they're everywhere. You'll never use them. Your phones are full, your computers are full, everything is full, your mind is full, your books are full, your car is full, everything on you is full. But you don't have the anointing. You're not walking in the power of the Holy Spirit. 
You're not hearing God as you should and you don't know why. He says, my son, with a reading of books, he says, that is only a wearing of the mind. I'm not saying I'm against reading. I'm not saying I'm against Facebook. I'm not saying I'm against Instagram. No, but the biggest percentage of people in the world are actually addicted. This which was supposed to serve them has now become their God. Some people can't even be away from their phone for 10 minutes. They can't. They can't. Something happens. Where's my phone? Where? They can lose anything but not their phone. They can't lose their phone. How can they lose their phone? They must know where their phone is all the day. You see people walking together and they're like this. You're at a conversation with somebody over lunch. I'm listening. I'm coming tomorrow. Yeah. You understand? You're responding on somebody on Facebook. You're laughing. You know, you're no longer emotional. You understand? Somebody has lost someone. You send an emoji of tears. And then somebody, you know, has gotten a job. Congratulations. And then you clap and then put a dancing woman in a red dress. And you know, it's so emotionally displaced. So what was supposed to serve you for basic purpose to help you be effective in life has become Baal. Oh, Baalim, the plural sense. I tell people, we are on Facebook only for the gospel. If you're not on the gospel, get off. Are you hearing me? That's why Fanero is on Facebook. To allow that Christian who just wants to access God and preach the gospel to get there. If we're done, you have no business knowing which car I drive, where I live, what I eat, how I sleep. That's irrelevant. We are running out of time, saints. We're running out of time. Millions and millions of people are dying every day because now we've substituted internet from service to God. I saw, for example, when they switched off internet in Uganda, you see people shaking. When are they putting on internet? You understand? My brother has a friend. Uh, this young man was telling me of a friend he has. So they switch off Facebook. This fellow plays games the whole day. He's on Facebook and WhatsApp and everything. He uses the phone a lot. So he tells me, it was funny, but it was interesting to hear. This young man says, man, they switched off internet. Now all my business is gone. Business? This guy says, business? Well, what do you mean by business? No, I was doing my stuff there. But what is his stuff? Games and, you know, nothing was bringing this young man income. You understand? But he looks like he's even starting to fall sick. He can't think right. Why? Because they switched off internet. They just switched off internet. <laughs> and now, when they're left without anything that is coming to their head, they can't think. They can't contemplate. The theta waves of their minds are not awakened. They can't create. They cannot be inspired. They cannot. Nothing defines them out of everything they're feeling. I was counseling somebody recently. They said, Apostle, my brain is full. I feel it's full of something I have no words for, but it's full. It's full. Not of scripture, not of revelation, but it is full. Because now God has been substituted. How can you sit and talk with people online for four hours and you can't talk to God for 10 minutes? How do you expect to have results? You see, how can you sit on Facebook the whole day and you can never spend two hours with God? Two hours with God, one hour with God. And you're asking yourself why our generation cannot see God? How? How is it so easy for you to watch a whole season on Netflix and you sleep up to 4 a.m. in the morning, but you can't be awake up to 2 a.m., just from midnight to 2, tiring in the presence of God. So how can you say, oh, you know, you deserve to walk in the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit? How? You're full of what has possessed you. You're full of what has taken over you. And now you're planted even without knowing. We hear men more than God. The world is full of fake news. The media has gotten the art. Today, people, everything they read is true. Everything they see is true. And sometimes as a man of the spirit, you know, I can tune on a television station, for example, the news and CNN, and I'm hearing this guy speaking, but I'm hearing what he's not telling me. And I know that what he's not telling me is the truth. You see? But I see riots come up on places of men that are watching things because they've taken them as they are. And how deceptive this can be, this goddess media has got in the hearts of people. Everything they read on the internet is true. So what is truth? What is truth? Pontius Pilate asks. Because they no longer know the truth. Again, 
Learn to look at your mobile phone now as a tool. Learn to use it as a tool and a tool only. Nothing more than that. If you're done with this doing, put it away. If you're not for the gospel and some beneficial, why are you using this phone for? Why are you on that computer? Why are you on that TV the whole day? How can you watch TV the whole day? You have one life and it is short. And you have a lot to do in this one life. And you can sit on television from 8 a.m. to midnight every day. And you have no conviction in your spirit that something is wrong. You see that? You have no conviction in your spirit that something is wrong. Facebook, free. How much you pay? Nothing. WhatsApp, free. It's nothing. Instagram, free. Twitter, free. One man said, if it's free, then you are the product. You are the product. And so on the higher levels, after getting you, you know, drowned, enslaved, and drunk with the stupor of their creations, you are discussed on a table of transaction for them to earn more money because they have you. Because they have you. I don't think that Zuckerberg is on Facebook. In fact, one time I read, that fellow does not spend more than five hours on Facebook for a whole week. So it means... Some of you are more on Facebook than the guy who created it and has access to all the data in the world. In parts of Africa, some parts to get data is a miracle. Now imagine guys in Europe who pay, you know, a whole plan over a month and they have it all at $19, $20 and they have internet the whole month. The Ugandans, God is just preserving only because you don't have enough money to buy data. If you had data, you'd be gone. You'd be gone. And that is the truth. I've spoken about this, but there's many other things. Again, like I said, there's many things that can actually take us, but this is the most notable example that God has started to show me just how demonic this is. How bounding this is. People are possessed on television. I was praying for a girl once, and when I was praying over her, a demon spirit spoke through her. I was disturbed by how it was acting, and out of curiosity, I said, where did you come from? And it mentioned the movie. The way she was manifesting, it was so strange for me. I'd never seen something like that. Now out of curiosity, I don't really like making demons speak but because I know I have the anointing. I took time to ask, where did you come from? And the demon spirit through the girl spoke through a certain movie. It mentioned the name of that movie. So she actually transacted with the devil watching a movie for two hours. It's serious. It's more serious than many of us think. Some of us don't even know what it takes for some of these people to create these movies and their agenda exoterically, not esoterically. You know, in the world of darkness, they have what is exoteric and esoteric. What do we want them to know? What do we really want to do? Anyway, Hosea says, there is hope though. In the second chapter, the 16th verse, he says, it shall be at that day, okay, now he's talking about a time that has to come and I feel it's the season for us to pray and preach this and believe God for a change that must take place in our dispensation. It says that it shall be at that day, said the Lord, that thou shalt call me Ishi and thou shalt call me no more Baali. For I will take away the names of Baali out of her mouth, this Israel, and they shall no more be remembered by their name. And in that day, I will make a covenant for them with the beasts of the field and with the fowls of heaven and with the creeping things of the ground. And I will break the bow and the sword and the battle out of the earth. And I will make them to lie down safely. He says, I'll betroth thee unto me forever. I will marry you and not allow you to get married to anything else besides me. He says, I will betroth thee unto me in righteousness and in judgment and in loving kindness and in mercies. I'll even betroth thee unto me in faithfulness and thou shalt know the Lord and it shall come to pass in that day that I will hear, saith the Lord, and I will hear the heavens and they shall hear thee, earth, and the earth shall hear the corn, listen, the wine and the oil and they shall hear Jezreel, okay? In Psalms 104, he speaks of the wine that maketh the heart of a man and the oil that maketh his face to shine on the bread which strengthens his heart. He says, I shall allow the stirring of the wine and the corn and the oil for the earth. The wine is to make the heart of a man glad so men don't walk in depression and suicide thoughts. That's why in Europe, kids are killing themselves every day. Suicide is there. And one time in the Yukon, they told me the rates of suicide of young people and I was shocked. 
They don't have joy in their hearts anymore. They've lost meaning for living. He speaks of how the heart of man is glad with the wine of the spirit. The oil makes that man's face shine. That's the countenance anointed. And he speaks of the bread which strengthens the man's heart. Remember, you got the heart for out of it are the issues of life. Okay? And he continues to say, And I will sow her unto me in the earth, and I will have mercy upon her that had not obtained mercy. And I'll say to them which were not my people, Thou art my people, and they shall say, Thou art my God. So he says, A time will come that. Now I want to believe God that this is the time, or else when. He says, Now faith is. Now faith is. And my heart's prayer is that we would walk in this reality today. That we will walk in this truth today. That God will kill every manner of idol in our lives. Even that which we assume not to have control over us. But we can recognize that it has the control over us. There are people who are so controlled by their jobs. That what was supposed to be just a source of income has become your God. That without it you can't even live anymore. You cannot live anymore. If you lost that job, you're gone. You'd sink and lose everything. Because the covenants by which men use to establish these businesses are different from the way the sons and daughters of God align themselves for this. And one of the biggest deceptions in the world is around wealth. How does wealth come? No job will ever pay you enough to make wealth. It doesn't exist. Because wealth does not come through jobs. It comes through a covenant. He says it gives us power to make wealth that he might establish the covenant that he made with our forefathers. So I'm not saying there is no hard work, but a work without purpose can only enslave you. And many people don't have purpose except for the basic human visions of I'm working to get a car, I'm working to build a house, I'm working so I can sustain my family. How myopic can you be? How short-sighted can you be? What about your responsibility to the world? Did you not say that occupy until I come? You think God is interested in you having that little job that pays you enough just for your family so you die a happy man alone? No. He has called you to change the world. He has called you that through you millions and hundreds of millions might come to the saving knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Search yourself. Where is your bar? Where is your bar? Some people's bar is even in relationships. You are in a relationship that is going to kill you. That is sucking the energy and spirit of God and the operation of God in your life. But you have refused to let go of that relationship. Because something tells you that if you let that man go who has been paying your rent, who has been paying your fuel, you're going to walk on the streets and you don't want your OGs to see you looking like that. But you know that the relationship that you're in every other day is disconnecting you from your purpose and the call of God concerning your life. And you chose him as your bar. You chose him as your bar. Some, it's this bottle. Without it, they can't leave. They don't get some themselves a drink. They cannot have happiness in their heart. Because the source of their joy is no longer in the Holy Spirit. It is in something mundane. Something worldly. Some of us as believers, we're too alive to the world. If you're not out, you can't feel healthy. If you're not hanging in certain places, you can't feel no more. If you're not with a certain crew and group of people, you feel like something is missing out of you and you're still asking yourself why the power of God is not evident on your life. All things are lawful, but not all things are expedient. And it says, all things are lawful, but I shall not be brought under the power of any. Refuse to be enslaved by the idols of this world. Father, we thank you. Just open your mouth and speak. Come and speak to God. You alone are my strength, my shield. To you, Lord, May my spirit heal. You alone are my heart, desire, and I love to worship you. 
Come and speak another tongue. You alone are my strength, my shield. To you alone, may my spirit yield. It's you alone of my heart. Desire and I love to worship you. Shareko tarelele boza rabakot. You Lord, am my strength. O sharaba babako brazo romose rebro ko shatala lelele bo. Robo zile bo shirelele mando robo sakata lelele bo. God, we believe this is the time when we must be delivered from idols, from gods of men, from the creations of men that have enslaved us and made us products and services for their own profit. This is the time of God that you read us of the things that we do not need to know, that we will invest our time in the things that we really need to know that we will zero our understanding to only you and that we will pull together this curtain to focus only on the things that build us to focus only on the things that edify us to focus only on the things that liberate us and not the things that bring us under bondage we are believing you for a move that is coming not far from now and we want to be a part of that story god help us i pray for the sick in the name of jesus i pray for the bound and those that are hurt and broken May God deliver you. May God deliver you in the name of Jesus. If you have not given your life to Christ, I want to give you an opportunity to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You're just going to repeat these words after me. You say, Lord Jesus, I thank you because you shed your blood for me and was raised for my glory. Today, I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Amen. The message you have just heard was brought to you by Fenero Ministries International. For more information, contact us on telephone number 041-466-4291 or email us at fenerocompala at gmail.com. You can also find us on the web at www.fenero.org. Or better still, feel free to join us every Thursday for our weekly fellowships at Uma Multipurpose Hall from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can also catch the live stream at livestream.com slash Fenero. Fenero. Make manifest. <laughs>